Welcome back to the big city. We are back officially in Hanoi and this time we are on our own and we're going to do it properly. So you might recall from a few videos ago we had just one night here. It was a fun night but not nearly enough time so today we are properly exploring the city. So Hanoi actually has a number of lakes within the city. This one is very very central. In English it's called Sword Lake. And in Vietnamese, it's something like Hoan Kiem. I'm sure I'm completely butchering it. Probably gonna say everything completely wrong today, but it's very, very central. So if you're coming to Hanoi, you're probably gonna go by it because it's very, very near to the old town. Uh, I can't get over how pretty it is here and tranquil. I mean, we're in a big city right now. This is a big city. It's quite overwhelming as soon as you get away from this lake. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of scooters. It's very hard to uh, cross the street, so it's cool to have this right, right here in the middle. It's really nice to see all these people out enjoying the green space by the lake. You can see these large trees overhanging into the lake, and the lake itself is surrounded by some buildings. What a beautiful location. What a place to start here. It is a great place to start. It's funny because it's like kind of a weird dichotomy of like you're in a green space, but you can also hear the traffic. There's yeah. a lot of beeping here and there, but it's still really, really calm. And I think uh, there's one question you guys ask us a lot. We don't talk about it too often, but weather. If you're wondering what the weather's like, my watch says it's 27 degrees today. It's overcast and yeah. it doesn't feel that hot. It was raining a lot this morning. There is a little bit of a breeze, but when it goes away, it feels quite humid. <laughs> so I think if, it, if that actually went away, it would feel really hot. And just so you know, we're here in April, which a lot of people tell us it's the best time to be here because it's not summer yet. We're on our way to summer, so it's a little bit cooler. And if you're wondering who we are and you don't know, it's your first time here. Trevor, Anna's behind the camera, delightful travelers. Click on the subscribe button. We have a whole Vietnamese series underway here on this beautiful country. We're just on our way through a very impressive gate to a very specific bridge. You can see the bridge behind me here. It is a red bridge. Again, we are smack dab in the middle of this giant city and you're never going to believe what's on the other side of this bridge. But first, a little more about the bridge. So it's called Hock Bridge. It's a symbol of Buddhist architecture and it's well known as the bridge where light is absorbed. The bridge where light is absorbed. I like that. Wow. <laughs> Holy moly. So right across the bridge is a temple in the middle of the lake. It's called Nagog Sun Temple. Again, probably totally butchering the names. Apologies. But it's a Buddhist temple right here in the middle of the city. Check this out. The temple just got even better. It's got cute kitty cats. He's <laughs> clearly not paying much attention no, to us. He's just not... like having a bath. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we were just talking about whether or not this is our first Buddhist temple and we were about to say yes, but then we well thought about it. We more. realized <laughs> that we were in China about what was that like five or six years ago We yeah. went to a whole bunch of them. So definitely not our first. <laughs> but this one is very beautiful. Wow Everything is so gold and luxurious looking isn't it? Yeah, it's really really beautiful and ornate very 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 ornate I cannot believe how beautiful it is inside here. There's so many statues and etchings I cannot get over it and just the roof and the architecture of the building is incredible. I completely forgot how beautiful these temples are. So the name of the temple actually translates to Temple of the Jade Mountain. You're going to see us looking at our phones a lot today for the historical facts. We're definitely not historians, definitely <laughs> not experts on Vietnam, so that's why we rely on doing research and hope, hoping that this is in fact correct. So this was actually built in the 18th century and it's dedicated to a war hero named Tran Hung Dao. He defeated 300,000 Mongolians who tried to invade Vietnam back in the 13th century. So we were just in the temple, but you can find altars in there, some artifacts, and a 250 kilogram preserved specimen of a giant turtle. A 250 kilogram specimen of a giant turtle. I didn't, I didn't see that in there. Did any of you guys spot that? What the heck? Don't hold your breath if you're hoping we go back in there and try to find that big turtle. We have things to do and places to see in this big city. You probably noticed that the main way to get around this city is scooters. There is just so many scooters here, it's hard to even fathom. We read something like there's 8 million people in uh, the city area of yeah. Hanoi. I think the whole like entire city, municipality, there's 8 million, but within the urban area there's 4 million. And so. I'd like to take a guess, let you guys guess how many scooters there are. We don't have the actual numbers, but I feel like there's at least 8 million scooters in this city. Well, we just found a Catholic 
cathedral that is very magnificent and beautiful right in the middle of this city. This is crazy to me. We just went from a Buddhist temple to this Catholic cathedral. This is a French cathedral and we're going to tell you a little bit more about that and why it's here right now. So in case you didn't know, the French actually colonized Vietnam and that's why you see a lot of French influence here, including a church which happens to be the oldest here in Hanoi. It was built in 1886 and the architectural, architectural style, I guess, is compared to Notre Dame in Paris. It does look a little bit like it, I guess, if you look at it. Uh, the church is one of the first structures built by the French, which I already said, was in 1886. It's funny because the whole city is busy like this. Everywhere you go, it's just constant chaos. Like, can we make it across the street? Let's go. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Anytime a lot of uh, other tourists see the camera, they usually wave and say hello. We always like, we always like that. Ooh, it's pretty tight here, huh? Yeah, they're like basically <laughs> almost hitting us as they come around that corner. So as we uh, navigate our way through the city here and all these scooters and random restaurants and there's so many people around, we're actually looking for some train tracks right now because there's something pretty iconic in this city. I, we don't know... If, it sounds it, really strange when you say it like that. <laughs> it does, well, it is a little strange, but we don't know if it'll actually be there. This will all make sense in a few moments. Well, we found uh, the train tracks, didn't we? <laughs> we did. I don't know if we're in the exact spot that we're supposed to be. I had read that so sometimes trains do come through here. People actually live in here and they have to get everything off the street. There used to be cafes and stuff, but maybe that's in a different section. So I would kind of read that for a while there were cafes in here, but they had to take them away because it was just too dangerous. But I don't know. So we just found this sign here. It's part of a cafe, but I think it's closed. I don't know if it just closed for the pandemic or not, but it does have the times. It looks like the trains come in the evenings. But it's still pretty neat. Even though there's no train here, it's still cool that there's tracks that go right through these people's homes. I've never seen anything like that before, but it would be pretty cool to see a train. We might have to come back again tomorrow and give it a try. Oh, I'm not sure if you can tell by the camera, but it's really tight in here. It's like tight quarters. It's very quiet right now. I can't imagine when the train is going by. It must be so loud. I don't know if it goes fast or slow, but I can't imagine how loud it would be. There's also like multiple stories here. So it's not just like the bottom level. There's a lot of people that live on the street. As annoying as it would be to live on the street and have to plan your life around the train schedule, I bet you it's more annoying to have loads of tourists coming up and down your street all the time and taking photos. Well, there's not many today, but I think sometimes it can get pretty crazy for people. They're always trying to get us in the uh, cyclo things, huh? Yeah, we've already done it. We've already it? done it. It's okay, thank you. No, it's okay. We've done it before. We've yeah. been on them. And... Uh, meet you, meet you. No, okay. no, no. Meet you, meet you. He's a nice guy, but I, we, I don't know how to say it in Vietnamese, but you guys know in another video we already did it. He's a funny guy. So that is one thing about the city. You are going to get approached a lot if you're a tourist. And they're gonna try to get you, you know, on uh, on their cyclos or get you to do touristic things. Yeah, but... coming to the store, that kind of thing. But in general, we found That's Vietnamese nice. people are so incredibly nice. <laughs> very so nice. nice. Very soft spoken, very sweet. It's uh, the only time they're not very nice is when you try to cross the street. And I say that in a tongue in cheek kind of way because we have to go across the street now. You may have noticed that it's not the most pedestrian friendly city. There are other areas that are a little better than where we're at right now. The problem is all these scooters, they're on the sidewalk. <laughs> So it makes it a little difficult to get around, huh? Yeah, basically the sidewalks are parking lots for the uh, scooters. <laughs> yeah. so. This is crazy. What do you do? So hopefully this better illustrates just how many scooters there are in the city. They're literally everywhere. There's about a hundred here. No, I'm, I'm actually joking. Look, it's as far as the eye can see. Where's our scooter? I don't know. Why don't we have one? Are we brave enough to try it? Definitely not. <laughs> We're just on our way back to our hotel, but we wanted to tuck into this little kind of alley area and show you guys this. Look at this. I know, it reminds me of like the market in Bali or something. There's loads of clothes if you need underwear or socks or anything like that. It's the place to come. You know what else it reminds you of? Like the Grand Bazaar. Oh, totally. In Istanbul. Yeah. <laughs> Except the Grand Bazaar is basically this alley times a million. <laughs> it's like this little strip. I'm pretty sure you can spend days and days in the Grand oh, yeah. Bazaar. <laughs> Easily. But we're almost at our hotel and I think you're going to be a little bit shocked at what you can get for the price here in the city. It's one of the things that are very, well, makes Hanoi very appealing. Welcome to Toronto Hotel. It's right smack in the middle of the old quarter. It's actually only a few seconds from that little alley that we just walked mm -hmm. through. And we're about to give you a room tour. Let's get right into it. We just walked right in. This is our little entryway, but we've got the bathroom over here. 
It's not the biggest bathroom, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to do the tour, but you got the uh, toilet on one side, sink area here. Then you got a really, really amazing shower on this side with like four shower heads. So back there is the closet. This is where we're putting our suitcases and our big old mess right now. <laughs> and then you have a little thing in here with coffee and a mini bar as well. As we go towards the other side of the room, you're going to see a TV on one side that we don't use. I know we say this all the time, but we never use a TV when we're traveling. But you do have a very comfortable bed, which we use all the time when we're traveling. But this is definitely one of the more comfortable beds we have been in in a while. We were actually just out for like three hours and they didn't clean our room while we were gone. <laughs> so if you're wondering why the bed and things are messy, that's why. Hopefully they'll clean it a little bit later. But we also have a sitting area over here. Again, excuse the mess. But the best part of the room, and I think this is why it's an upgraded room, is over here. Well, here we go. We have our own little patio with quite a view of the city, huh? We do. Sorry, there's some construction noise around. There's some buildings being constructed. That's what you're probably hearing in the background. But you can actually see the lake over there. We have a pretty good lake view. Yeah, we absolutely have a tremendous lake view just through those buildings over there. We're up on the 11th floor, and when you're this high and you have a view of the skyline of this city, you really can appreciate just how big this city is. It's an animal. It feels so big when you're walking around, but when you're up top here, it just feels like it's endless. It just does not end. It's as far as the eye can see. So get this. Hotels in Vietnam in general are really, really well priced. This is like in the center of everything. It's two minutes from that lake. It's right in the old quarter. I think the basic room started at $50 a night. We upgraded to a junior suite, which was $60 a night. It includes breakfast. There is also a pool on the roof and a restaurant as well. Pretty sure there is a gym and a spa in the basement. Like this place has everything. Not bad, right? So now we're going to take you guys to an entirely different part of the city to show you even more of what Hanoi has to offer. You ready? Let's go. Well, let us welcome you to Seven Bridges Brewing. We've come over to an area called Westlake and you know we love our craft beer and this place is just right up our alley. We're sitting here on the patio with a giant craft beer. Now, did you know Hanoi had craft beer coming in? We did not know that it was such a big thing here. In this area specifically, in Westlake, it's all about craft beer and good food. Lucky us because we're big fans of craft beer. We haven't had a lot when we were in the Dominican Republic. Here we are in Vietnam. What a crazy world, having some craft beer. Wow. And it's good. This is a blonde ale. We're gonna be here for a while. It's loud back there. Love it, so much life in this city. But this is gonna do the trick. We'll probably have another beer as we go on. We're starting light with Blondale. So, because it's called West Lake, there is actually a lake here. It's way bigger than the one we were at earlier. It's, it's apparently the biggest lake here in Hanoi, and it's really, really huge. You can't really see it, you can sort of see it from here, but not really. But we kind of went around it last night, and we went to a different craft beer place. We would have taken you back there today, except they have to be closed this afternoon for a private event into the evening, so we couldn't go. But it's a great opportunity to try another place. We ended up talking to one of the people that work at that craft beer place last night, and uh, they told us a little bit about the neighborhood. It's definitely more of an ex expat place. You can get different types of food, and I think there's also a lot of like condos and high-end hotels around here as well. So it's a great area to visit if you are in the area, or if you're planning on spending a whole lot of time here, it's probably a good place to set up shop. I think I'm the most excited about this. Popcorn? They, they give you popcorn here with your beer. <laughs> if you're this far along in the video and you're wondering, hey, are they hungry? They, why aren't they eating any Vietnamese food? Well, we do plan on eating, well, probably in the next segment, except we're going to an Asian fusion place. This, this city's so big, it's not all Vietnamese food. So we want to try something we've been on the hunt for for a long time. Now, if you want to see us eat Vietnamese food, we're going to be doing that in the next video. We're dedicating an entire video here in the city of Hanoi on Vietnamese food. Well, we've left the brewery and we're in some back alleys in Hanoi. No need to worry, but we <laughs> we straight up don't know which way to go right now to get to the place we're trying to go. I don't even know where Anna is. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's back there. I think Google has taken us the wrong way. What do you think? Do you think Google has uh, failed us? Uh, yeah. Uh, so we got pretty lost and dead ends, <laughs> but we did run into a guy that put us Maybe on track, he gave us some directions. He said, at the Safeway, turn right. So we're at the Safeway. Oh, we now. found the Safeway right here. <laughs> 
Well, luckily there was like a British guy over there and he was like, yeah, just like keep going. This alley's gonna snake around for a while. You're gonna see a Safeway, which is odd to see a Safeway here. And then you're gonna eventually come across what we're looking for. Well, we found it. The place is called Bow Wow and we're certainly not the only ones here. It was actually pretty difficult to get to as you can tell from watching. Don't, if you're trying to get to this place, don't follow Google Maps. Just follow the road, you'll get here. We were messaging them the whole time on Facebook. They were super helpful. Now we're here, we got some wine, and we got some delicious food. It smells really good in here, and we think there's some delicious food on the way. We're gonna see it very soon. So the reason we are here is for the bao buns. Those of you that are familiar with them might have picked up on the play on words of the uh, name of the restaurant, which is bao wow, bao in the name. So a bao is essentially like a steam bun on the bottom, and then they kind of turn it into a taco. I think you can get like some traditional ones, but these are totally fusion. I went for a fried chicken. It's called Dirty Bird. The first thing I actually noticed is that there's actually a, a huge red chili cut into two on top. And this is supposedly not supposed to be a spicy bun, so I'm a little worried I'm gonna like burn my mouth off, but let's try it. Why well, not? I'm, I'm glad you're gonna try it first. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny because the second one that we didn't order was some sort of play on words about a Big Mac. This one actually reminds me kind of of like the chicken sandwich at McDonald's. The fried chicken itself kind of reminds me of like whatever the fried chicken, the junior chicken or whatever it is there. It's got some really yummy sauce on it. I don't have anything super spicy at the moment. Maybe as I get into it, it'll get crazy, but at the moment it's fine. I love the bun itself. Super fluffy. I don't even know how you make these, but oh, steam buns are the best. They're almost better than a taco shell just because they're so light and fluffy and yummy. All right, I went for something called the K-Town. There's some beef on here. It's like a kind of like a Korean, like a spicy beef. You'll probably see some uh, basically pickled onions, cilantro, and a bunch of other goodness. There's some sauce in there as well. I'm just gonna go for this. <laughs> wow. That is delicious. Holy smokes. First thing I notice on this is the beef. It is just pure perfection. It's definitely cooked low and slow. It came highly recommended as well, but the, the onions on here, the pickled onions, add a bit of sweetness. You got cilantro. I know a lot of people don't like cilantro. We happen to be on Team Cilantro. And then you got this kind of steam bun, and it's just so soft, it's so pillowy. It's so good. This, this is a perfect size as well. We were wondering how big these were gonna be. We ordered two each, and if you're coming here, I think that is what you wanna do. It's the perfect, perfect strategy to eat this thing. Just look at the inside of that. Oh my God. You guys, this is where you have to come if you're coming to Hanoi. It's a weekend today, and you could probably see just how many people are outside. This is not a special event at all. Just everybody seems to come out at night, maybe because it's cooler. And yeah, the buildings are lit up. There's so many scooters, so many people. There's bands <laughs> playing. I don't know if you can actually hear it. There's one right on the street outside of our hotel. You can, might be able to hear right now. Wow. We actually thought there was a special event going on, but no, it's just a typical no. weekend night. <laughs> so as you can probably tell, if you got this far in the video, this city is just full of life. Yeah. It's incredible. It's definitely up there with one of our favorites we've been to, and I don't know if this will shock you, we talked about this a lot today, we talk, we would, I would live in this city. Absolutely, I don't know if regular travelers, like people that go on vacation places, mm -hmm. in places think about, could I live here, or if it, you don't even bother thinking about it because it's not a possibility, yeah. but for us, everywhere we go, it's kind of always in the back of our minds, like, do we like the city and could we live here? And yeah, exactly. like live here for a short period of time and set up mm -hmm. shop, work out of here, and of course film, and do all mm -hmm. the things that we do we could do it here. This city has everything. It's a major hub, flight destination as well. That's a huge check. So if you got this far in the video and you're, you're still wondering who we are, it's Trevor and Anna, <laughs> delightful travelers. If you're not new, it's great. You guys are here again. You guys are the ones that keep us going. Hit subscribe, leave us a comment. We love that. Heck, share the video. That really helps us out. <laughs> I know one thing, this city is now moving to the top of our list of favorite cities. It's a very cool city. We got to see like the old quarter today, but also so like some cool. really hist old historic things that have been around for like a thousand years. And then we went to a super trendy area too. It's like this city has I so know. much to offer. I love, I love that it has a little bit of everything. As you can tell, Vietnam has been treating us well it and is. Hanoi, oh Hanoi, we're, we're loving you. <laughs> Absolutely. In the next video, we're going to eat some of the more Vietnamese food. Yeah, we already lots. did one Vietnamese food uh, video in Hoi An and we're going to do it again here in Hanoi. I cannot wait to eat some more food in the next video. That is coming up. All right, guys, that's it. From Hanoi, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon. Yeah.